So today is officially the halfway mark of our five-year plan to pay off this mortgage. We are officially two and a half years in, and we're so excited because we know we can see the finish line in sight, and we're appreciating the journey along the way too. The two and a half years that have gone by, it honestly seems like it's flown by for me in hindsight, but while you're going through it, it does take a while. This is a great milestone for us. We're so excited. Looking at that balance decrease every month, honestly, every other week, it's really exciting for us. We're so happy to look forward to the future and when this thing will be completely paid off. And before we get started, if you are someone who's paying off debt, comment down below and tell us what your total debt amount is and how you plan to pay it off. Also, please subscribe if you want to follow our journey. If you're new here, three years ago, we signed a contract to start building this house. So in September of 2020, we officially closed on this house. It was a great day. It didn't feel real just because we had been renting for so long. At times we weren't sure if we'd ever be able to buy, but once the day finally came and we got the keys, it was a surreal feeling. Um, coming into this home for the first time, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> <laughs> after closing and just everything we had been through with renting and having like crazy neighbors like crying myself to sleep sometimes because it was so hard being uncomfortable in your own home and sometimes we would go on walks and like drive around and look at houses just to get out the house and get out of our living situations that were so bad like could have been worse but it was really bad and it really affected our mental health sometimes i mean i don't want to speak for dennis but for myself anyway <laughs> walking into this house for the first time um in september of 2020 it was an amazing feeling it felt like not real we never would have envisioned ourselves even building a house let alone sometimes thinking that we were not gonna be able to buy a house, but to be able to build one and like see it get built from the ground up, it's a completely different feeling. And when you really don't come from <clears throat> living in a house throughout your childhood, I lived in a house for a little bit throughout my childhood for maybe two or three years, Dennis never did. So it's a different feeling when you own a home and you don't grow up like having that your entire life living in apartments, dealing with different situations growing up, and then it's just different. It's it's different when you have a house and you live in a house like your whole entire childhood and you live like that's just how you grow up. It's just what you're used to. Um, when you're not living in a house throughout your childhood, it's different. You have a new appreciation for it, um, for having your own, having something to yourself, not having to deal with neighbors. But not only that, we had a kid that was like running around all the time and we felt like we were disturbing our other neighbors after we were being disturbed by neighbors for so many years. So it's a different feeling. It's completely different. If you're someone who really just didn't grow up like that, you may not understand completely, but it's just a different feeling when you have your own and no one can come in your apartment whenever you want, tell them that you're going to have inspections on your apartment and bother you and you're just trying to sleep. I can go on all day. So that's why we feel really passionate about it. And it's just a completely different feeling for us being able to have our own home. Um, not even to mention a debt-free journey or being able to work on paying off this house and everything. But it's definitely still very important to us. Um, one thing I regretted about our consumer debt journey was not documenting a whole lot of anything um like sometimes we would work all day come home be exhausted and it's easy to forget what you went through when you don't have like pictures or videos or anything like that so we definitely talk about how we're feeling today or in this part of our journey at our halfway mark just what we're, things we're going through and then just talking about the numbers and where we would be with our mortgage right now in comparison to where we're actually at so how are you feeling right now in our in this step of our debt-free journey i'm feeling so excited so ready so motivated seeing that balance go down is just all the motivation i need to keep working hard and just wanting to put extra and everything we can towards this mortgage. Just knowing that end goal of us finally owning it outright 
It's just so exciting for me and I just can't wait. And especially for me growing up, having a good life, but just being in negative debt, negative net worth, not owning anything. It's just so exciting to know that we can control this whole asset and have it all to ourselves, that no one can take it away from us. So how do you feel now about being at the halfway mark of our five year plan? Um, right now, I feel like it, like you said, it also has gone by pretty quickly. I also think about where we were two and a half years ago when we closed on this house, like our youngest son wasn't even born yet. So when I think about it like that, like, wow, our kid wasn't even here, one of our kids, it feels like it was a long time because of that. Just turned two in December. So that makes it feel like a long time, but it really hasn't been that long. Time has gone really fast. We are just homebodies. We're always here. We have been doing a lot of the same thing, just working a lot. As far as like how I feel mentally, um, it's I'm a workaholic. I've been like that for a very long time. It's hard for me to step away from the overtime. I tell myself I'm gonna limit myself and I don't and I just do a lot, but I do feel like I'm starting to find somewhere I'm getting a little bit of like a small bit in my brain of just remembering work-life balance and how important it is and learning to really just turn off my mind as far as work goes when I clock out and just not worrying about it. Um, anything that happened like during my work day, just trying to like leave it alone and forget about it till Monday, you know, when it's Friday. So that's how I feel about it too. When you have a really big goal like we do with paying off a mortgage, you want to make as much money as you can. I guess I just think about like looking back on it and everything that you have to go through, you know, yeah. it's a lot. It's still a lot of work. Right now, I know that without overtime, we wouldn't be able to pay as much as we do to our mortgage. Um, it helps us take home an additional at least $700 a month. So I'm very grateful for it, thankful, thankful to be working from home, just to be able to easily sign on and do additional hours. But I also try to limit myself as much as I can and not do too much because sometimes I do overwork myself. But when you have goals and not only a big mortgage balance, but saving goals, you owe money to the IRS. Like you just know that there's always money to be made is kind of how my money works. Like there's always someplace our money could be going is why I want to supplement our income and just make more if possible. So, but yeah, you definitely have to have a balance. That's super important. I hope someday I can look back on this video and just be like, wow, you know, we don't even need to like work as much as much as I did or as much as we did. Lately, I've also been doing DoorDash, Uber Eats, like we've talked about in our previous videos. So just to do a little bit extra and to also try to get out the house and make money in different ways. So I've been having fun with that, um, but that was also something that could end up being addicting. And it's work at the end of the day. It sounds like you're just delivering food, but it's a lot of work getting in and out of the car, running up and down people's steps to apartment complexes. Um, it's it's work. It's, I hope one day, especially after this mortgage is paid off, my hope is just to not even feel the urge to like make extra money. Like you have to eventually just feel like enough is enough. Like when does it stop? So I hope to be able to just work 40 hours a week and just clock out and just be able to de detach from work and not only mentally be able to just not think about it at all. That's something that I'm working towards and I'll get there. At the end of the day, every dollar made, it's more money that we could put towards our mortgage. So we're still thankful for overtime and any opportunity to up our income. We're gonna get into a little bit of our numbers and just talking about how much we've paid so far at two and a half years where we're at. Right now, as we're filming this video, our balance is at 137,242. Right now we have a pending payment of $80. Our game plan when we first started this mortgage or when we first closed on our house, our plan was to pay off the mortgage in 10 years. And in the beginning of 2022 is when we then decided to change it to five. Just with the progress we've made so far, really crunching down, being aggressive, we decided that that was something we wanted to aim for and that it could be achievable. In September or in 2020 period, we only paid the minimum payment for the first month. And then the 
other two months, we paid 1100 just rounded to the nearest $100. In 2021 is when we began kicking it into overdrive, paying as much principal payments as we could. And that year, in 2021, we paid a total of $50,275 and $7,060 of that went to interest. The next year in 2022, we paid a lot more. We paid 67,550 total and 5,472 of that went to interest. This year in 2023 so far with us being in March as we're filming this video, we've paid a total of 11,280. Of that, $1,073.47 have gone to interest. We added up how much we have paid in total so far. So in total, 2020, 2021, 2022, and this year, we've paid a total of $132,376. And of that, $15,305 has gone to interest, which is crazy. It's a ton of money. We use it more to take. <laughs> That's a hard word to say. We use an amortization table to find out what we would have paid if we had paid our minimum payment every single month, our balance would be at 240,000. And to repeat, right now our balance is at 137,242. So over a hundred thousand dollar difference. If we would have just paid our minimum payment up until this point, we would have paid 31,000 to our mortgage at this point instead of 132,000. With where our balance is at right now, according to our amortization table, we would not have reached this point until December of 2037. And as we are filming this video, it is 2023. That is crazy. As you can see, we are not playing any games with this mortgage. We're trying to get this thing out of here. <laughs> and as you can see from the decreases in interest we've paid over the last few years, the interest is really front loaded in mortgages. So it definitely behooves you to pay it off earlier than later. And that's exactly what we're doing. I mean, we're putting all this money towards it now and it's saving us so much interest in the long run. And it's just so exciting seeing that number decrease and knowing that we're paying less interest with each payment, honestly, and every year just going down and down. So according to our amortization table, if we had paid our mortgage as a 30 year mortgage and paid our minimum payment the entire time, we would have paid $131,000 in just interest on top of the mortgage that we took out, which our mortgage was 254,000. So tacking that on, that puts us at like at least 380 paying back rather than just 254. With us being at 15,000 paid to interest so far, even if we doubled that since we're at a half year mark, so timesing that by two, that'd be about 30,000. That's at least $100,000 that we're saving in the long run. However, I'm not expecting us to pay 30,000 because you're charged more interest in the beginning of your loan. That goes really for any loan. If you ever look at your breakdown with any debt that you've had, student loan, personal loans, they put your interest, the amount that you're charged in interest is the most at the beginning of your loan. So that's why it's not really a huge difference right now as far as where we would have been with interest if we had paid the minimum. However, each month, our interest, the amount that we're paying in interest goes down. So we're really expecting it to not be 30 by the time we're done. We're expecting more like 20, 25 at the most. I'm, I'm guessing really, you can't really specifically state. You really just have to wait and see because it goes down anytime we make a payment, anytime we make an extra principal payment, the amount of interest that we're getting charged for the following month goes down. So more to come on that. And with all these numbers you see, we're just trying to motivate you out there and show that we're just two normal people, regular jobs, and we really don't like debt. And we just want to get this debt out of our lives and own all of our money. We hope to inspire you to do the same and show you that this is possible with a lot of determination and hard work. To you watching this right now, thinking about the debt that you have, whether you have the mindset of thinking that you'd never be able to pay it off or that it's going to take so long and you just wanna take your time doing it, the time is going to pass anyway. Rather we had been paying on this mortgage and paying our minimum payment or being as, as aggressive as we have, two and a half years would have gone by anyway. So really you have to think about, am I going to use my time that I have to kick it into overdrive and crush my goals that much sooner? Or am I just going to coast through things, pay the minimum on whatever debt that you have, 
knowing that you could have put extra towards it and you might be that much closer to reaching your goals, whichever of the two is perfectly fine. But if you're someone who has the urge to be debt free or to have less debt, that time is going to pass by anyway. So start today. If we had not taken the time to make a plan as soon as we started on this mortgage, we wouldn't be where we're at today. We would have a lot more of this mortgage still left for us. I'm very thankful for us making good use of our time and deciding to use these two and a half years to get us closer to our end goal, which is to be mortgage free. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, share it with someone you know, and I cannot wait to see what we do with the next two and a half years. Me too. Mm -hmm.